we're there. Happy Tuesday. I see it. Welcome to week 15. I'm just going to keep talking because we think <laughs> we're here. Yes, we think we're here. Week 15 of our Facebook Live events. And tonight we are talking about feeling pretty. Or at least a movie that was titled I feel pretty. That's what we're going to talk about tonight. And I can't wait. So, as oh, usual, sorry. my name is Nikki. My phone is still on. Oh, sorry. Echoing in the I background. apologize. I am Nikki Rome, Rebecca White, Winter Navi, and we are here once again to share with you all of our internal ramblings over the internet. <laughs> do. So, who I'm wants to nuts. start? Can I just say that when we were the title of this movie, it kept making me think about whatever movie that was with Jack Nicholson, and he was like, I feel pretty, so pretty. You know who that is? That's a Jack Nicholson I don't know. movie? I, and it was hilarious. Isn't it? Oh, is Adam Sandler? I don't know. I think it might be both. It's in my head. I the just, song comes from an old singing, musical. Men, singing it down the street. I yeah. know, and they were seeing a movie. Now I'm thinking it's Adam Sandler. I don't know. I'm going to look it up now. <laughs> okay. But talk about the other stuff. We're just going to go ahead and start on a tangent. So, we disagree. Yeah, let's just start on a tangent. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> so what about the movie, movie is, the movie the movie movie is called... Oh. Okay, I have never seen that. Yeah, it was so the movie we and, and Adam Sandler. Boom. <laughs> Sorry. Someone Odd combination. Yeah, I forget you're delayed, <laughs> and then I start talking and get annoyed you're talking over me, but you were still talking when I started talking, and that's my fault, not yours. Anyway, the movie we watched was I Feel Pretty with Amy Sh Oh, no. She froze I mean, right in the middle of it. Oh no. Sure. No, here. There or you did are. I freeze? Can you not hear me? Start over. We couldn't hear you. We're all we here, hear according you. to me. I don't know. <laughs> I think it said 2018, like that. I don't even remember the movie theater, but I do remember the first time I attempted to watch it. So, uh, <laughs> we have varying opinions on no, this movie, which is fun. Clearly. Who yeah. wants to start? I think we have things, so. though. That's good. Go, Becca. Go. So, oh. I re I'm the one who asked us to watch this movie because yeah, so when I saw it. Her start. Um, not that I liked everything about it. Um, the second time I watched it recently, I watched it with Trooper, so I had to skip a couple of scenes um, <laughs> because he definitely wasn't going to watch those scenes. And actually, I don't know if I watched them the first time, to be honest, um, but they're goofy. They're not. Anyway, but it's not a kid's movie, um, but I really appreciated a lot of things about it, including the idea that um, the way we see ourselves affects the way other people see us so much. And I really do think that's true, that when we um, don't have confidence and when we don't feel, whether it's attractive or smart or whatever it is, the way we act tells other people how to think about us a lot. Um, again, it's not 100%, of course, but I think the movie illustrates really well um, how how much effect it can have. And I know, like, looking back, personally, people who, who had big personalities who were not afraid to be, um, to put themselves out there did, sorry, um, <laughs> cattails just walking by. Um, did somehow become popular even if they weren't pretty, you know, like the stereotypical 
or whatever you want to call it, pretty. I know sometimes people who I would consider to be very pretty might still not um, feel pretty. So they may withdraw or hide or, you know, whatever it is, have other things they're self-conscious about, like one of the characters in the movie who feels um, like no one takes her seriously in her mind. You know, like she's like, oh, please don't say, what was the word she said? Don't say, was it dumb or something like that? Because it's like a trigger for her because people assume that she is, I guess. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, that, that, that was broken. Like people just assume because she's yeah, pretty that she's like also check. dumb. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that she kept seeing everywhere. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I didn't write down the though, word that it was. But. Can't. Can I say though that that is a a plot hole? I think me because after she thought that she was a different person, she still kept walking up to that girl before she had changed, and they kept seeing each other throughout. Right? Is that just me? Yeah. Well, I think she just didn't think the girl um, thought she. Well, she approached her the in the person. restaurant for the first time when she thought she was pretty, and but they yeah. don't show what she said to her in order to get invited to the room or to the speakeasy. And then yeah. she came back to the table and was like, "I can get in, but you can't." So I don't know if it's a plot hole or they just kind of left her by in the dark there. She called her by name before. Yeah, that might be. I'd have to go back and see, mm -hmm. like, when did she um first... Yeah, that might be. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely not a perfect movie, and there are certainly things to not like about it. But just the overall point of it, I really enjoyed. The, just the idea that beauty is not all in your face or your body or the things that people often um, value. Sorry, I'm being attacked by animals again. We really do need to talk about animals in one of these, the pros and cons. Mm. <laughs> I have a lot of animals. <laughs> Sometimes uh, just won't I leave watched me alone. the movie today with two middle nephews and one great nephew. So a 16-year-old, almost 14-year-old, and a five-year-old. The five-year-old okay. kept disappearing. The teenagers I sent out to make a, a eggs right, right, right before the two scenes that you probably had to just pass <laughs> through. Because <laughs> they were really close together, those two scenes. Um, so, yeah, so yeah was, they were. And they actually just decided to just disappear. And I was like, yeah, you care. No worries. You're big. <laughs> and they started walking back in. I was like, stay out there. And they were like, okay. I'm like, okay, you're good. I don't see winter. I was like, uh, here's what I actually like the movie. Um, I don't think you're supposed to like her character when she changes his personality. There's a pro and a con. I right. feel like the person she was before mm -hmm. Which was um, a little more humble, but also self-deprecating. And then when she went new person, she was overly well. When she first started out, a little bit she wasn't humble, but she was interested in all the people who came in. There was a part she was just where, happy to be her, to, right? Where she was happy and treated one nicely, and as she progressed in that, she kept. Kept getting signs about things, which was hilarious. But there was a point where at her new job, she started ignoring the people who weren't pretty. Um, yeah. And, and that I didn't like. I, the confidence was awesome. But the way she took it to the next level to start treating people um, was a little disappointing. Mm -hmm. And I feel like by the time you got to the end, um, she found a mix of both, where she could find be humble and confident in who she was. Um, and she realized that everyone saw her that way the whole time. Um, I was telling my nephew, I was like, do you guys notice that 
in the very first part of the, of the story when she's uncomfortable with who she is and she's so uncomfortable she can't even tell her shoe size like she gives three different shoe sizes yeah um which is very yeah. interesting um but her manner was hunched over it whispering not like wanting to be seen whereas in the mm -hmm. second half she was like here i hear me roar um <laughs> and then by the time she got to the end she was still quirky but but herself and i told my niece i said i told him i said you can see that the complete difference after she realized she um when she went back past the curse or whatever it was the the gift wasn't there anymore um well in the way she in the way she communicated every the only thing that changed about her was basically her energy her energy just changed um when she was self-deprecating and then when she thought she was the most beautiful person in the world she was high and on fire and no one could bring her down um and i told you, majority of the time the beautiful people that you see or people are beautiful because of who they are on the inside um because it's very often that you can find someone who's handsome and old or beautiful and over time the personality you want them as pretty or beautiful or handsome and then someone who's maybe like not initially attracted to over time become attractive based on their personality. Mm -hmm. that. <laughs> yeah, me too. I married one. And was married by one. <laughs> oh. Well, it's been 18 years. Are you there, Nikki? <laughs> Something to <laughs> be right. Yeah. Yeah. Something's working. I'm here. I'm just quietly listening. So tell us what you don't like about it. Because, um, I mean, we probably agree on a lot of the things that you don't like about it. You know, it's not like I'm not 100% on this or anything. No, I, I, I mean, obviously, it's I like movie, so the everything's done in, in extremes. But I did try to watch it once. And I think I texted you guys last night. And I was like, I feel like I've seen this. <laughs> and I remember not finishing it because. I just like where I very rarely will ever put down a book. I will very often get up and walk away from a movie or turn it <laughs> off or just be like, this is awful. And I had a this is awful experience the first time I watched it. And I had a this is awful time I watched it. And I did make it all the way to the end this time. Like I forced myself to sit through it. I guess my struggle with it was is I never liked her at all throughout the entire movie. I did not like her in the beginning. I did not like her. She had gained her confidence. I didn't like her when she had, and even in the end when she's like, that was me and this is me, and, and it was all about me again. The whole movie was all about me, and I think that struggled. Because even in the beginning, yeah. her friends were, they were having That's that true. conversation, and they were taking the pictures and doing this. She was still starting to understand, and this is how it really is, and this is what people think about us. Like, she was the mean girl then. <laughs> And then when mm -hmm. she had gained her confidence and was working as the receptionist, True. to me, it was just over the top tushy kissing. Like, oh, I'm going to impress everybody because I have this fancy job and I'm going to do this, this. It didn't to me seem like it was like genuine. Oh, I want to be kind and help people. So then for me, by the time she was being nasty to the woman that got off the elevator with the Bed Bath & Beyond bag like her, I was like, screw this chick. Like, I'm done. I'm so done. Yeah. <laughs> The thing that I did yeah, like yeah. Well, was it. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Delays. <laughs> I'm going to keep going. Um, yeah. The thing, the only thing that I have to say that I truly did was the video that she showed at the end in the presentation that started with her friends and had all these real looking people in it. Because at that point, she hadn't really that she was the same person so it was almost like there in that moment it showed to me that something had clicked along the way where it didn't matter what you looked like it mattered that everyone looked different and I don't even know if the movie even 
spoke to me as far as like, like I know like what you pulled from it was, you know, beauty on the inside. I didn't even get that feeling from the movie. I guess maybe to me, I don't always, and it's probably a me thing. It often is. I don't always feel like beauty is is beautiful person on this earth that thinks the person next to them is gorgeous regardless of how they look so unless you're talking about stereotypical beauty which is what this movie was all about i struggle with that because to me i don't care what you look like somebody out there thinks you're gorgeous and it doesn't necessarily even have to do with what's on the inside it could if that's important to you yes but here is that important to you i hate people discredit that because People struggle from self-esteem and things like that because of the way their exterior looks. And when we say things like, oh, but you're beautiful for this girl or for that girl, or you know, you you're you 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 have this part of you, or you're so kind-hearted, or you're so nice, and beauty's on the inside, that just discredits the person's feelings about being insecure about what they look like. And so just because I was like, there was nothing about the person she was that I liked. <laughs> It was all about what she looked like, what she thought she looked like, or what she thought other people thought she looked like. But the guy she was with was really like just for her personality. I mean, you could see this in his eyes the first yeah. time he was like chatting with her, and he, then it was his person, her personality that pulled him in even more. But that whole piece of it was like missing, and he kept telling her beautiful person to me and she never believed him i don't know it's just a weird me well yeah, it wasn't even that weird. she didn't believe him she thought he <laughs> was referring to who he thought the new person was the thing and, and i think maybe the reason i liked it was not necessarily her character but because i was able to get a lot of teaching lessons from my nephews not only did she get this it's really cool yeah. in the, in the laundry in the laundry place, you know, because she was suddenly confident enough to not realize she was talking about her tick number, but <laughs> just gave him a number and she and she asked him out, out and all these different things. At the same time, the guy who she thought she could never attract became attracted to her because she didn't try. She never even tried be that girl for him and i thought that that was really cool um very happy that they didn't go so far as her cheating because i was like oh she got she, i mean you already are doing all these other things right you already like abandoned <laughs> your friends yeah. and now you think you're better than your friends there were a lot of things that weren't cool and at the same time i guess when the beforehand she thought they were at the of the dubs like she didn't even think highly at that time. So, um, even well, she felt uh, she was with them. That she was in until the end. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. She felt like they were all just the bottom of the barrel, basically, that yeah. no one would ever want to be with them. Mm -hmm. um, and part of that was because of her. It was the way she viewed her self physically and the fact is that from so many angles we are told that you know like we're told that that's what is attractive to people and <laughs> which was always babysitting on this sorry I had muted it no screaming child in the background I love it sorry <laughs> Yeah, and I get. I think it was more put into the storyline before. Oh no, she's just gone. I'll be back. I think she tried to mute. I think it was more put into the story, or maybe about her history, or something that made me under. I don't. I just. I wish I had liked her before everything had happened. I think that's where my problem was. Mm. And it could also be where you are in your life watching it. Um, like it's something I've been learning a bit about lately is how like you have to go through that. You have to go through a stage where you feel like you are important as an individual 
and like you have, you know, self-efficacy and autonomy and all those things before you can really, as a healthy person, move into um, seeing other people as, you know, like as your community. And it, I, I think that her character, um, she was finding community, but not as a healthy person because she had never felt autonomous in herself. Right. So then, so she has this unhealthy relationship with her best friends where they all feel kind of dumpy about it themselves and like that's all they could hope for basically is to do some kind of group dating thing and see if anyone would go out with them. Um, and then, and so she goes through that awkward phase, which even if you think about kids do that often they go through that no um you know not listening to anyone just um being selfish and whatever but it's a phase that they kind of have to in order to be healthy in community they you really have to go through that phase where you do think about yourself a lot all the time mm -hmm. um and i think a lot of us don't get that chance because we're especially as women we're pushed from very early to be compliant, to um, to help other people instead of focusing on what we want to do. Um, and I don't know that it's intentional necessarily, but society, parents, mm -hmm. school, like whatever it is, we kind of um, lose that sense of self. And well, you've said in other lives, like, well, I do a better job of um, advocating for my kids than I ever did for myself. And yeah. I think that's because that's how we're taught to be. And then at some point, well, you get women like leaving their husbands in their forties or whatever. And we say it's a midlife crisis when it's probably because they skipped a part of development <laughs> and they're yeah. finally going back for it. And it's not, you know, not that that's a good or healthy thing, but um, I don't know. I wonder how much of that mm -hmm. has to do with that character too and if you're not in a part where I feel like when I first saw the movie I was and I'm still kind of exploring more of that like who am I what do I need to do to be an autonomous person that's not just a wife servant mother does that make sense so seeing yeah. it was like that's what I need in my life I need some more like confidence that that I'm not just waiting to see what everyone thinks about me, but that I'm just okay with who I am. Right. But obviously the danger is like what she did is uh, starting to feel like you're better than everyone else, everyone which else. is obviously not good or healthy either. No. Um, or it's not also not a sign of healthy, um, like self-esteem. No, not even a little bit. But I mean, it took honestly 10 years of marriage for me to feel comfortable in my own skin. So I guess maybe it's some of my own crop coming up stuff. Sorry. Me and my words. I said, so I think maybe it's some of my own stuff too. Like, is it, you know, that you just, you have these memories of times where you didn't feel good about yourself and then you watch it on TV and you're like, oh. I remember feeling that way. <laughs> yeah. There was no real, I mean, I know there was supposed to be the, but a lot of times it was just making fun of her, you know, trying to do a hairstyle and failing at I would have liked to have seen her get her hair right and going into the office that day and feeling good about herself. I didn't need to see her, you know, I mean, I've looked in a mirror and felt terrible about myself. That's devastating enough. I don't need to watch her also fail at a hair tutorial on top of it or, it just, it was just, it was just a lot. I just felt bad for her. It was just not, I don't know. It was just weird. But there were some really but good that, points made that, at the end. I will say that. I think that even goes to the here. assessment of the fact that in the first tutorial she did, she did it horribly and she thought she was doing good and then realized she failed. But then in the second time, let me see her doing tutorial for makeup and she's doing I think it was all because of her perception that she thought that she should do it better now because she was in a different place in a different headspace and people saw her differently like she wasn't a different person she just viewed herself was different and that supposedly that was the reason she did differently in the tutorial you know what I mean 
that just goes to show how important it is your mom like how yeah differently yourself or your expectations of yourself can change based on little things like and in that there's also there's also a layer of codependency in that she needs to feel oh, beautiful yeah. so that other people can want her or appreciate her or, or you know what I mean? Like she wasn't enough before people. She took a pay cut because she wanted to look around beautiful people. Her aspirations <laughs> was to be And ended up becoming president. <laughs> beautiful place around beautiful people and 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 i had to i have to be honest in the end i i told the girls this earlier we got to the point because i was way the reveal for her to recognize that the way everyone treated nothing to do with the way she looked but at the way she felt that whole whole time period and when she finally understanding and and as a writer a writer when she realized the same person in both pictures and she turned around and she gave a huge sales pitch, I was like, that is some good writing. It was good. It, it, it touched, I like started crying. <laughs> I was like, oh, she gets it. And I feel what you're saying, Nikki, because she made that video before she realized she was one of those people still. The whole, you know, I, and <laughs> it showed um, her growth. And in that also, she didn't go there to get her job back. She went there to actually help this company and these people who she's now cared for. Um, and she did it because of doing it wrong and she wanted them. It had nothing to do with yeah. her skill and her talents and showing that here's what you need. I'm going to help you get there. And she wanted to help the people who could potentially buy those products. To yeah, be able to get her. what they wanted to feel, yeah, to and to be happy with it, and not feel um, like intimidated or or like they needed it, right? Because their speech was about you're you're beautiful anyway. But if you want to buy this, and if you think that it will make you feel nice or whatever, then great. Um, make a what did I write change down about you. that. Yeah, who you and then she was making amends. Like she knew, she realized that she had not been kind that she had not um, treated people when she thought she was better than them. She wasn't treating them with respect. And so she went far out of her way to make amends because they didn't really accept her apology when she just apologized because she had hurt them. Sure. And I don't blame them, right? Like, yeah, I mean, it, just saying you're sorry sometimes isn't enough. No. Um, but well, she and she really... only was sorry she had fallen back to rock bottom. It wasn't because she really felt sorry. Yeah. It was because she needed yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah. No yeah she felt back. She felt she was a loser like them again. <laughs> like, you know, in mm -hmm. her mind, that's how she was seeing it. Right. Yeah. So she really did have to grow up and accept it, which is a part And I think of that was actually the kick in the turning that took her to the next level. Yeah, she was afraid of being of seen by anyone. And yeah, yeah, I think you're right. Which is good. But yeah, the importance of making amends is so huge. And that's not what the movie was about, but it is what um, made it. It is what made Winter cry. So you can't, you can't say it's not significant. <laughs> Uh, and then my nephews were like, Auntie Winter. I was like, I know. <laughs> like, but I, just, just realization of it's been me the whole time. Like, it wasn't the way I looked that changed how people perceived me. It was the way I felt about myself. Mm -hmm. um, although she was nasty in quite a few scenes. And I don't even think she realized she she was being nasty. That's the sad part. She just the opposite of the way she was before and how way people were treating her. You know, and it was 
all about perception. Her, even when she was in the even, store after. Oh. She... Go ahead. Sorry. No, no. Let's keep going. <laughs> even when she was in the store with the guys in front of her and the girl behind her, and one thing right in front of you, and she, she was off to the side. It was because the man probably really didn't see her. He was big drinking herself. Crazy. Um, <laughs> but her perception had completely changed because prior to that, everything she right. heard, everything around her, oh, it was about her. <laughs> the constructors were whistling right. down the road. And she was like, thank you. <laughs> the guy opened right. the door for himself. He left the room for you under your arm, like all in what she experienced expected the world to see in her because yes she thought she looked different and she I really had that at someone one point who wanted them to show what gorgeous what she would was be talking in the mirror that way <laughs> yeah right and so then when she didn't feel like she was pretty she expected people to treat her badly and to ignore her like you said like with the people yes. in front of her like yeah so she just assumed that they did and i have to wonder well, sometimes I know for a fact, but how many times my assumptions have like totally played, you know, um, made people treat me a certain way because of the way I, you know, like what I did or what I acted or like when you assume someone's going to cut you off and then someone pulls in front of you, you assume that they cut you off because you didn't go because you thought they were going to cut you off. So, you know, things like things like that or. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Um, and again, again, I think it goes back to one of our first, first very, very first views. It's perception is a difference in everything, affects everything, affects how we feel, it affects how we see ourselves and we see others. Um, the whole, the, literally, the whole movie was about, about perception. Mm. Yeah. One of the funny things, all right, so at the very beginning of the movie, she's wearing the sweatshirt that says, get it, girl. Like she's trying to psych herself up. You know, like she's going to go to this gym thing. And I didn't notice it the first time I saw it, but I think like it was kind of funny to me to think, okay, like she's doing all this. She's really trying to psych herself up, but but she's coming from a place of what futility like i'm gonna try to psych myself up but but i'm gonna fail but i can't tell people what my shoe size is but i don't want people to see me or um just everything about her was like a place of failure basically i could never have the job mm -hmm. i want i could never get the guy i want i could never you know all these things and those little uh it's great to su surround yourself with positive thinking, but it can't really take you there. <laughs> Despite all my signs that I have on the wall. Although a great deal of negative thinking can 110% take you there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So it's it just seems a lot more positive than, uh, but wearing a t-shirt is isn't never going to help. No. <laughs> Because the person I, who has that confidence funny? doesn't need the t-shirt. What was funny? True. True. Can I tell how funny it was when she fell off of the bike the second time? And, and they're giving us so she won't sue them. And then she's from the fall that she's beautiful. And they're like, oh, we're going to just go ahead and bend down a bit back since you're super it was to cover the bald patch of her head because part of her hair but she was like out. i'm beautiful wow which That's we never saw like, i must have found out through that, that whole thing i remember them no, trying to the give scene. it to her but i didn't know yeah. why they were giving it to her other than they the, didn't with, no when she do. fell out, the her hair I got never caught in the bike wheel. The bald patch Some of her head on her head ripped it out, and I didn't catch them <laughs> taking it back. I think, yeah, 
Yeah. yeah. And she was like, okay. Was like, okay. The other girl like yeah, almost throws up because she sees it. She's like, oh. <laughs> she was like, oh. oh. <laughs> I think I missed that part. But it, I mean, there's some really, really funny parts in this. In this, I don't know. What you know? What I did like, which I found interesting. I really liked the male character. I kind of liked yeah. both male characters, but I really, really liked the boyfriend male character because he was like, "I'm here because I'm afraid of you." <laughs> I know. I liked him too. I was afraid to say no. <laughs> but slowly over yeah. time. <laughs> to say no but her outrageousness <laughs> over time um caused him to actually appreciate stuff that would cause him to be scared about her um and i thought it was cool i think he was yeah. embarrassed for her at the bikini contest until she just did it yeah you know? but i didn't like that but like i did not like how he was trying to that did not sit well with me wait what did you say? Uh, he was trying and then it cut out. Oh, he was trying. Me? Yes. Me? <laughs> I yes. said I did not like that scene at the beginning. You of that did not scene like how he... In fact, I had liked him quite a bit up until do something else. And uh, I was like, her from getting on stage. Let her freaking do what she wants to do. Like, you chose. Go ahead and support her. Don't keep trying to offer to go Mexican or whatever. She, like, whatever. She's crazy. <laughs> you went over there. You said you went because she's crazy. So just go. <laughs> and I don't know if it that you were supposed to see but that I, shift in him from being embarrassed from her to like actually backing her up. But I feel like he should have been backing her up from the beginning. You know what I mean? Because he does make that shift in that scene but where my, he's like all of a sudden standing applauding for her. But he spent so much time convincing her not to. I'm like, dude, leave her be. Let her do what she wants. I don't know. Yeah, it was. I think it was showing again, his embarrassment and his. He was, crazy <laughs> he was really crazy up to that point, and it and he had his guard down yet. I want to uh, one word. I wrote down the thing he says to her at the picnic. Like, I paused it and wrote it down because okay. I just thought it was so beautiful. He says, um, he's talking about what he likes about her, um, which is, of course, she thinks it's because she's a model, right? But he says, you're so yourself. I think a lot of people are confused about themselves. They, like, obsess over whatever negative qualities they see in themselves, and they completely miss the thing that really makes them awesome. Which, and at that point, it was before she had started getting, um, mean, mean, I think, or at least he Too hadn't seen that. Yeah, where yeah. she was, she wasn't really being herself anymore. Like she was losing that genuine, um, just love because when you feel confident and when you do love yourself, whether it's the way you look or well, you know, whatever it is. You don't, um, you don't have to feel better than other people. You can just be happy with who you are. And she didn't have, like, she went through that. I think there was a really nice phase where she, before she transitioned into being too much, where she was just really excited to be herself. And I think that's like, I think it's a great thing to aspire to, to be excited to be yourself. And like excited, not just because I'm like, oh, I'm I'm okay with who I am, and you know, I know who I am, and I'm all right. But I wouldn't say I'm excited to be myself <laughs> very often. It, d does that make sense? Like, mm -hmm. and not based on looks. Not like I want to look in the mirror and be like, oh, I'm just gorgeous. But the whole thing. Yeah. No, I, I get that. that. I thought that was sweet. It was. It was a nice yeah. one. Yeah. There were a few. Well, uh, I don't mean to make it sound like I hated the, 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 the scene. Thing. In, like, I would never watch it again. Really sweet. <laughs> <laughs> the scene in the restaurant. You didn't like the way she went through the process. It didn't seem genuine to you. Huh? 
Uh-huh. Which she didn't start out as a nun. Got something super cool. Where she thought he didn't nice her. And so she pretended somebody else was really hitting on her. As because he thought it was him that she was playing. Yeah. She and she didn't realize that really just talking to who he thought was his girlfriend. I thought really, right. really interesting scene. And I, and I it kind of broke my heart I that he was talking to her and she thought he was talking right. to the other girl that she thought she was. Right. And broke about her. Broke with them for and it. I did like her. that part of it. Right. Because she was like, wait, your girlfriend? Like, that was when I think it started clicking for her that he really liked her. More than just her looks. Right. Mm-hmm. And that, but yeah. that he would never, he, she still felt like he wouldn't like her the way she was. No. Right. Which shows a, definitely a character flaw. I mean, like, that she didn't trust. Flaw. That he was a good enough person that he would love her mm-hmm. for who she is. But that, that isn't was. that what self-doubt does to you, though? Like, if you don't trust your own self, you can't trust other people. Mm-hmm. To like you more than you like yourself. I mean, that the codependency. That's certainly a part of. Or no. That can be codependent. Yeah, I mean, codependency could mean a lot of things, but yes, for sure, not um, not valuing yourself enough to do what's good for you and to and to be able to have a healthy relationship because you assume that you couldn't have a healthy relationship. Mm-hmm. is often a sign of Can I say she was not spatially at any stage of her life until the very, very... She wasn't socially and spatially aware of how people saw her at any stage. Mm-hmm. Like at the beginning, like... Though, like she was going in like she was a big girl. She was a big girl. One. Okay, you have large feet. Okay. Yeah. She wasn't aware of hey, how people nine perceived and a half her or a ten. in the first stage, <laughs> and and it's not, not a deal. It's not it's not a big deal, to you, is it? Do you like whisper it when you go to the? It was room when I was younger. Something. Oh, when I was younger, really? it was a big deal. I mean, I was a teenager with size nine shoes. I felt like they had huge feet. My mother was a size seven but and a half. Tall, I had you? nothing to compare it to. Yes. But as a child or a teenager, I relate this too. My mom's tiny. My sister's tiny. Okay. Your father's a giant. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, your brothers are giant. Your brothers are giant. <laughs> Clearly, I take after Jeannie's side of the family. <laughs> but, um... <laughs> Sorry. Right. No, I agree with that. Like that she was not self aware (laughs) from the beginning. And something that I even was talking about, um yeah, I wrote on my one of my notes was like she was never unpretty. She's a pretty person in Mm -hmm. just in general. Like she is pretty. If I mean she's not supermodel pretty, and that's what her ideal was. And she it's had no really problem showing leg, that's for sure. Like from the beginning, she Mm-mm. wore like super short skirts and yeah. which I thought was a little odd actually, because if she doesn't have <laughs> like self-confidence, I mean my, my way of coping yeah. with lack of self-confidence is to uh wear ankle length and you know, like <laughs> don't let anybody see what I don't want them to see. So um but, but she was into style and everything from the beginning. Like she's still she still did that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But again, it was she her She started doing her hair. She changed. Mm-hmm. Completely was. And when people were like, when she was like, people were like, scoff at her. She was like, I know. <laughs> She's not, not seeing these people's responses. And it, <laughs> it kept going back. <laughs> right. Like, she, I mean, if the she thing had where the she, same response the eating, the other person. Yeah. 
It was the same. It's just like, this when is it's so awesome. Like, I can eat whatever I want and still look like this. When she was with those girls, she's like, I can eat whatever I want and still look like this. And she's like, takes this huge bite of this burrito or whatever it was. And they're just cracking up. But they weren't making fun of her. Like, they they didn't know that she doesn't know like who she is, you know? <laughs> Exactly. I just think she doesn't care. And, and she's she just kept happy doing with that who she bit. is. Well, even when she was in the well, interview, like, the she was ever like, mean to her? no, you're be concerned. Sorry. They Say it again. were, they did. She didn't, yes, but she didn't recognize that either. They were mean to her. She asked if the pretty people were mean to her. Yes and no. The only, there was only one, but it was because into the place and she wanted to hand off the, the paperwork that the network wasn't the allowing them time. to send via computer. It's like, I'll give it to her. You, like that. Yeah. But she became that person. And that's what I didn't like. That she became that person towards the end of her time working at the counter. Yeah, it went to her head eventually. Mm -hmm. Which People I think is part of her character arc. Her, like except she has to for, go yeah, Except for when uh, there were a few Naomi, who dismissed the model her. who was in the movie. Yeah, they dismissed what it was. And then the first person Several who came people. in when she was at the desk and she was like, I can't believe you're here. She's like, I know. <laughs> no, she's like, no, I can't believe you're here. She's like, yeah, I understand. And she just saw it in right. a completely different light. Right. I wish I could do that. I mean, not to be actually ignorant of the way people are seeing me, but to be able to be like, I don't yeah, care. right. To really, <laughs> I would not want to be that kind of self-aware though. I mean, I just wouldn't, I would rather know. I, I think most mind. of the time. I would just utter bliss and ignorance. It would be a lot less anxiety. <laughs> I just, I want to know, but not care. Like to genuinely be like, mm. I don't care if you think That's I shouldn't be here. I'm here and I love it. You know, like mm. I love where I am. I love who I am. And I don't know. And not to just say you don't care, but to like legitimately not care. And they probably have drugs for that, but I'm not going to take them. <laughs> <laughs> You mean like when they were in the airplane and she like, work. I took a lot of stuff. <laughs> I, did. I took a lot of stuff. <laughs> oh, that lady, yeah. She's funny. But that was okay. One but of the things I also what? liked about They're... the movie was the family. I liked the family a yes. lot. I liked that they were, like, they're these rich, successful people, but they I were not... The yeah, they were not like in a lot of these shows, you get like the devil wears prod or something. And the person, you know, that high up person is so um, uppity and mean. And, you know, like there's this. But I love negative. that movie and loved her character because. Down pieces too. I, I, I loved everything about that movie. Which is funny. Yeah, well, I'm not trying to just the movie. I'm just saying there's a lot of things. There are no, a lot of movies where it's kind of like that, where like the Annie, you know, whatever it is, the rich person is snobby and doesn't care about other people. Where in this, they're mm -hmm. in their own world. They're not in touch with reality necessarily, but they're not trying to be mean or rude or like they really do want to do well and. And well, the they lady, she, they were out of their league with what they were trying to do, and that they did not have the experience to be able to do it. And right. I thought that that was they were humble, so right? That. They were humble right. about that, and they were they weren't yeah. even yeah. Um, reluctant to take her advice, or you know, they were like, "Oh, you know something? Yes, we can use you. Let's make you a vice president." Like, which good, you know? I thought it was it was a nice. Um, I don't know. It was just it was cool. Yeah. No, I can't right. stop thinking about the Devil Wears Prada. Can I say that? that was such a similar movie, but it was done so much better. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was. She did. She turned into it the wasn't mean girl a comedy, too. though. Did she? That wasn't really yeah. a comedy, though, was it? I didn't think of it as yeah, a comedy. It was. was it? I mean, 
it's a comedy. See, another thing that I, I liked about Anne this Hathaway. one Hathaway. was that she didn't. Um, Love a lot of those, and including Anne Hathaway, has been in a couple where she starts off being this super awkward, unattractive, really bad hair. Like they do, they go out of their way to make her unattractive and then Princess transform Diary. her. Princess right. Diary. And there's a I lot of movies a like kid. that. Where in this one she did it. Yeah. Like she was she was style. And and I appreciated that. Again, not that there's anything necessarily wrong with the other trope, but I I liked that she was not, she wasn't a loser. It was all her perception of herself. Everything that needed to change. And it was just an interesting her perspective. But there were two of yeah. those, and it hasn't been brought up. There were actually two of those because the boss, uh, who was played by Michelle, uh, in the boss who has a high pitched voice, she, on a similar <laughs> journey, she kept calling herself mm. stupid, thinking she wasn't doing a job, and uh, and and you can see of self disdain. And she thought mm -hmm. that her grandma considered her, and then she had some type of issue with her brother, <laughs> who was apparently a spinster. Um, <laughs> Maybe just being a sibling. <laughs> and she too got her validation. From her mother when you're cut out. I mean, thought it was like, again. nice to see her go through that journey. Yes, oh, I agree. Yeah, that I liked it in the mother? end too. When, yeah. you no, know, not the whole time. We got the gist of it. I liked in the end too when the grandmother was like, none of us would be breaking out you. That was good. No. He just got longer. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, the oh, grandmother was a, a really the grandmother nice was a phenomenal character. character. I liked her. Yeah. yeah. I did like that. It was her. And even, even the brother, even though he was spending all their money. <laughs> cool. <laughs> he seems genuine. I really hate that he hit on her. I was like, yeah, especially when he knew she had a boyfriend. Cool. And, and she had a yeah. girlfriend. I'm like, why can't he just be like the cool guys? Like, maybe sent in to check out this new hire or something, and then finds out she's great and tells his sister that she did wonderful. But then it wouldn't be a movie if there wasn't a love triangle. <laughs> so, and it so. would gave her something to. Uh, I have to say though, the best thing, a, a kind of a shock. Like that's what kind of made her think. Wait, who am I? Like, yeah, because she was about you know, like when. Yeah, right. Because that that could yes, have, I think she did. Yes. everything was going in to her head. Movie. She was just losing herself in that, and then finally realized, "Wait a second, what am I doing?" Like, mm -hmm. yeah. But yeah, I liked him less after that. I enjoyed Agreed. when he first came. Although on. He when he first came on, I was like, "Oh, I really like him." Because he's... yeah. Yeah, which again, in that kind of situation, it wouldn't be surprising for a guy to be pushier because he's got kind of a sense of power and it could have been bad. What is one other... And even in the very end, thing I wrote he down. told his sister that she had picked a good one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right, even though she turned him down. <laughs> Which is hard. <laughs> with diarrhea. <laughs> Down with diarrhea. <laughs> it's totally like a thing. And he respected her so much that he went back into the bedroom to realize that she had passed out with the blood all over her face. <laughs> Which is weird. You recognize me. Yeah, well, that was awkward. There was definitely some awkward humor, but... Um... Yeah. One other, I have to know what's hanging back. I know I've been staring at that too. Silver thing. Oh, that no. I think it's what a curtain that? thing. It's my birthday. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, because it was your birthday, yeah, a few days ago. Happy in person birthday. 
And now we can't hear her. What'd you do? Unplug your thing? Yeah, it's gone. Can't hear you. No one can hear you. She hit the She's just baby. still talking to herself. No, she's not <laughs> she's muted. Maybe really she, I, don't know, I don't know how <laughs> I did that. Is. I have no oh, clue. You are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I was like going on a whole story. Not watching. <laughs> it's my birthday <laughs> decoration. Um, but here's the thing, like like my mom's birthday is July first and my nephew, my youngest is July fifth. So she's just keeping it handy so she can slide it <laughs> right back. She's up. gonna bring it right back up. Smart lady. But those other two <laughs> That's my kind of it decorator. Seems it seems like you planned for it that way. <laughs> yeah. That yeah, you see the you can see the uh the ball right, right there. <laughs> oh, there it is. Uh, now it would make more sense. Yeah. <laughs> Party animals. Like word on something the <laughs> silver aluminum foil hanging in the I, background. I think, I'm happy I finally be, asked. Yeah. It's like the, the other end. String, the string broke, which is why it's hanging. And no one feels compelled to do it until July 1st. <laughs> Got it. Gotcha. So I think we should like have someone go back through all the videos and see, do we ever go on a tangent that's not focused on something that winter, <laughs> it's not a winter tangent. <laughs> no. Yes, and I love, it. I love yes. it. I'm not complaining yes, at all. Do. I just think it's funny. <laughs> it's why I'm a writer. <laughs> okay. When? I don't know this is amazing. Like that one, though. It was just about me. I start it. I'm just going to throw That's that true. out there. That's there. true. It's the way my mind works. No, Becca, so you I have, go we're almost out, out of time. time. Did you say, I'm going to go are almost out of probably time. have. But, oh, shoot. I just started turning off my phone. Um, on accident. So what did we? Is so next week something a I wanted to bring up one thing. Wait, we decide. One thing that I wanted to bring up. One more thing. She says to somebody in the movie. She says, "The line was wondering what it's like to be undeniably pretty." And I was that oh, to stuck with me a little bit. Like, have you ever wondered what or it's like, like to be un or? Or you don't know what it's like, I think she was saying, you know, to wonder what it's like to be undeniably pretty. Um, I, don't, I don't remember exactly how she said it, Kat. Um, she was talking and I, I don't know that I've ever really in the thought store. that way, but that is pretty. You're right, the model. The girl that was beautiful. She? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And she was like, I wonder um, what it's like to be like you. Yeah. And I think it would be. But is that a thing? Undeniably pretty. Is that even a thing? Because I mean, you could probably pick any supermodel, pull them off a runway, and they'll tell you ten things that's wrong with them. Right. Well, I think that's kind of the point, right? Like Reception. in her mind, yeah. there's this thing that you can reach. And then, of course, later she finds out that that girl has all kinds of self-esteem issues right. because she feels like she's not that smart. And yeah. And definitely, any of these people you talk to, they got, well, my nose is this, or, you know, there's an ounce of fat, fat over here. And, like, they see all of these things. Um, and just how it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't exist. And the more you focus on that, the more critics you will have. True. Just like a musician or anyone, right? Like, once you put yourself out there. But that's what I want to be able to not feel. Sorry, I'm being harassed again by a cat. Um, to be okay with it, to be to be confident enough to put yourself out there like she was without becoming a jerk, and to just refuse to be subdued by naysayers. I just I think it's a cool thing. Anyway, that was my last. Anybody else? Yeah, I want to say that that's why and in our culture, we are surprised when someone is considered beautiful or considered nice. Like, we're normally like, wow, that's really <laughs> awesome. 
because it's not something in our society that we expect. You don't correlate the two. That's a good point. Like it's like you're on the next level because you actually are a cool person when that should not be extra reward for being nice because you happen <laughs> to also be beautiful. But we do attribute that. Yeah, we think that people wouldn't need to be nice if they're especially good looking. And there probably is some truth to that. I mean, you can get away with more. It's a it's it's definitely a thing that in a lot of situations you can get away with more if you're an attractive person. That is true. And there's to more the people. Yeah. I mean right, I at least in certain work with someone who used to be in management and literally told me because we manage salespeople. And she said, I used to, if there were two people equally qualified, I'd hire the pretty person. Because in sales, the pretty person is mm. going to make more money for me. It matters. And she's not wrong. It does. Wow. The pretty person would make more money for you. Yeah. It just is what it is. I mean, I don't right. know. Right. There's a reason why people in commercials tend to be models. Well, there are. And then there's a lot of industries that have shifted that that's the new normal. Like I have a friend who's the realtor and was literally interviewed by one of our local news outlets. And she was talking about the fact how when I thought I wanted to come and sell houses, I didn't realize that I also had to look like a model and speak well and pose in my own ads and, you know, dress a certain way and walk a certain way and talk a certain way in every aspect of my life. But that's what's expected of me. And she's a very successful realtor, but she's 100 percent right. I mean, it's no longer the company, it's the person, the salesperson. Hmm. And there's a certain expectation when you have a realtor walk in a door that you want them. And it's usually very pretty. <laughs> yeah, and big personality. Like there's a certain. Mm -hmm. It's that. That's a whole yeah. other conversation. But can I for say, though? Um, I think that fits back <laughs> in our diversity. Yeah, I think it goes back to diversity and entertainment or things because I have to tell you that for most things, I will sit and watch a progressive commercial because I like that it's not a supermodel person doing it and it's a funny person and it's a cool person and I like it. <laughs> mm. They're commercial. Yeah, there was I can't help but watch them. State Farm ones too. Ever since the guy was like, did he ask you what you're wearing? Do they ask you what you're wearing? I was like, now I want to watch all of them to see what they're going to say next. And sure, <laughs> commercials have really stepped know, it up over so the last funny. couple years. <laughs> they have. Yeah. They but have. like, when did that start? It had to have started back with the Can You Hear Me Now guy. Because I don't really remember. Do you remember that? Was it at t or Sprint? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? And then you were at the other was, cell phone yes. company. And then at the other cell phone company, he was no, like, can you hear me no, now? No, he was rising and moved over to Sprint. That was what it was. But, like, that's know. when I, I think some of the comedy questions. started kicking in. And then there was versus just way. pretty people and pretty things. Yeah, but he ended up being a sleazeball or something. That is a conversation he? for another day. Not apparently going on. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> Someone take a note. The hear me or the Jerry. Down. I've got everything. We're like, what are we talking about next week? We should. This is when we should listen back the week before of all the stuff we talked about at nine o'clock. This is when yeah. all the good ideas happen. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of next I have week, let's one wrap this up movie. because I can't talk about this movie anymore. Yeah. Um, and we never decided. <laughs> so I'll send an invite out. And I thought we did. Be here or you won't. What did we decide? There was like five options. No one decided. Yeah, I don't think we really decided for sure. I think we decided we're going to see if we can get a guest. And then the value of if that does or doesn't work. Because Becca brought it up again tonight. Should we talk about How animals? about I'll look for a guest and if I, for whichever week that person could Either do next it. Week or we'll the 29th. Okay. And then do the, and then talking about pets and animals the other week. <gasps> Cat! Sorry. What a perfect segue to next week's show. <laughs> <laughs> Knocking my stuff over. If we dive. Right onto okay. the keyboard. <laughs> and on that note, I'm going to end this week's event before Becca's computer gets destroyed by her cat. We'll see y'all <laughs> next Tuesday. 
Sounds good. Bye. See ya. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.